For this tutorial we're going to be looking at input and output in Scratch and we're actually going to start off by talking about output because that's the simpler of the two concepts. Uh, when we talk about output in Scratch, because Scratch is a graphical environment, output can mean any number of things. Actually it's more than a graphical environment. So output can mean uh, what you're seeing on the screen here, it can be the sounds that Scratch can play, there's any number of things. But we're going to look at the traditional uh, view of output is text output, or at least that's the that's what we normally start with in programming. Scratch has four text output options. The say and the think are exactly the same, it's just how they appear. One of them is in a voice bubble and the other one is in a little thinking bubble. So that part is irrelevant, so I'm going to ignore the think commands for now. We also have two different types of say commands. One of them will say something for a certain amount of time. So in this case it says say hello for two seconds. And then the bubble disappears after two seconds have elapsed. There's another option which is simply say. And that will persist as long as uh, you don't use another say or think command. So basically until that sprite is uh, an option. If you move the sprite you can see that the that bubble reappears even if I move it around the screen. So that's going to persist until I were to do another say command. So for example I can override this by another say hello for two seconds. It'll say hello for two seconds but when it's done it's done and then the voice bubble will clear. So that's basic output. Now you can't put together a very interesting program this way Perhaps you could write a story, you could create a little a play or a performance with dialogue, but it wouldn't be interactive and it really wouldn't be much of a program. So in order to make it a program, we need to deal with, with input as well. So I'm going to, well, I'll leave these up here. Uh, generally, we do um, make use of both of these. And so I'll try to, to fill in some context about when we might use one or the other. So I'll just leave those on there for now. So in order for us to get more of an actual program, we have to start making use of input. Now input it actually involves output in the sense that normally we want to ask the user for input. Now as I said with output, Scratch has many options. Scratch has many options for input as well. Uh, Scratch has options to let you click the mouse, use the, the uh, numeric keypad, the arrow keys, even you can d assign different activities to different letters on your keyboard. But again, I'm doing the very basic version, which is what about getting the user to type in something? And that is, if we move over to the sensing menu, this light blue menu, that's the ask command. And you can see the default ask is what's your name? And that's a perfectly valid question to start with. So normally we think of an input as an output where we would actually say something like what's your name what is your name we might say that and then ask for input when you want to ask for input scratch has created a single command that does that for you so we don't actually need this particular say so i'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it we might use this say for two seconds sometime later now when you run a program and ask what's your name, you'll get a dialog box where you can actually type something in. So I'll just use a generic name here, Bob. And that's it. I just ran that one command. It asked me for a name and I type something in and then it's disappeared. So where is that gone? In Scratch, anytime you do input, a variable is going to be involved. Now Scratch has done its best to be as friendly as possible. And so they actually provide for us a default variable. It's kind of a catch-all. Basically anything you ask the user will go into this answer variable. And that sounds great. It's, oh, that's everything I need. Unfortunately it has the limitation which is any anytime you ask the user a question the answer is going to get is going to go in here and it's going to replace whatever was in there before. So if you ask the user 10 questions in a row only the tenth answer is going to be left behind. And we can check on the status of this variable by going over here and uh, clicking on this checkbox. And you can actually see, because I've already asked the question, what is your name, 
Bob is already in the variable answer. So a variable is like a container. It's a place where you put things that you want to make use of and maybe use later on. Now, as it stands right now, because answer is a temporary variable, and we're trying to, not only are we trying to learn some programming here, but we're trying to learn some good programming habits. So we never want to make use of the answer variable. What we want to do is anytime we ask the user a question that's worth remembering, that we're going to want to make use of their answer, we have to create our own variable for it. So in this case, if I ask the user what their name is, I'm going to create a variable. I can call this whatever I want, but I'm going to recommend, we could call this something as simple as name, but I don't even think that's sufficient. I would prefer something like username, because name could refer to any number of things. Maybe name refers to the name of this cat character that we've got on the screen, whereas username, that's really clear. That's what we're going to ask the user. So. In this sequence, we ask, what is your name? And the value that the user types in is going to go into this variable answer. Then what we want to do is we want to store that in our own variable. And the way we do that is we are going to use the set command. We're going to set this variable username to, and you can see by default there's a zero there, but we don't want that to be zero. We want answer to go there. So ask, what's your name? is going to put a value into answer and then the set command is going to put the answer into the variable username. So I'm just going to double click which will execute this little section of code again. What's your name? And this time I'll change it to Doug so we can see the change take place. Answer changes to Doug and you can see username also got changed to Doug. So the first command here put Doug into the blue answer variable the second command put Doug into the orange username variable. Okay, so let's try to illustrate the idea of losing that information and why we're using variables. So let's say we want to ask the user another question. We're going to also ask them their name, or sorry, their age. What is your age? And so in asking that, I'm going to need another variable called user age and I'm going to ask them the question and the exact same way I did before I'm going to take their answer but this time I'm going to take their answer and I'm going to set user age to answer. Once you have more than one variable you get a little drop down menu here and you can see that you can select from any of the variables that you've created. So we make sure we've got this right. The first question is for username and then we set it to username. Second question is for user age. We set it to user age. Now, if I run this program, all four of these blocks together, what is your name? And again, I'm just going to switch back. So I say Bob. And take a look. Answer is Bob and username is Bob. What is your age? Typical student in my class might be 15. So I say 15. Answer became 15. If we didn't have this username variable, we would have lost that piece of information. Maybe we need to know the user's name for later on. So this is, hopefully this at least illustrates to you some of the reason why you need to have a variable. Every time you want to ask the user a question, you're going to save that data in your own variable. Now let's come back around to the idea of output again. We started off talking about output, so let's now make use of this information. So if we've asked someone their name, we've asked someone their age, well, maybe a logical thing might be, we might say uh, uh, things like, well, we might say, hello, it'd be nice if we could say, hello, Bob, it would look something like this, but if I do that, that would only work if the person's name is Bob, if they change their name. So if I write in, write in Bob and 15, and it says, hello, Bob, well, oh, that's great, that worked perfectly. But let's run the program again. And now I'm going to put in Doug and 16. It says hello Bob again because this is just a collection of letters, B-O-B. -B. We need to refer to the variable, to that container with username. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to variables. Here's the variable username. I could put that in this box. Okay, let's see what we get from that. What is your name? Let's go back to Bob. What is your age? 15. 
and it just said now it just says bomb so we're getting there you could do this in a very simple and primitive way which is you might say okay let's put it together I'm going to say hello but instead of with an exclamation mark I'm going to put a comma there so I'm gonna say hello comma and then I'm gonna say their name and then I'm going to say your age is and then I'm going to say the, the user's age. And if I do this, it'll do something that's kind of useful. So what's your name? Bob. What's your age? 15. Hello, comma. Bob for two seconds. Your age is for two seconds, 15. Now the two second part doesn't matter there. I could have made this go much quicker, but the bottom line is the cat, the dialogue coming from the cat would have been this very kind of uh, halted way of speaking. No one would speak this way where they say hello and then another bubble appears that says the name. Ideally what you'd want is at most you want this to be two statements. You'd like to have these two statements occur together and you'd like to have these last two occur together. Now we can combine these things together and if we do that we go to the operators menu there's an operator specifically built in here for dealing with putting words together into kind of the form of a sentence and this is the join operator and you can see it comes preloaded with hello world and so we're going to instead we're going to basically put in the things that we want to see so I'm going to put in the word hello comma and I'm going to point out to you, hopefully you can see it when I highlight it here. Notice that there's actually a space on the end here. We have to include that space because the next thing I'm going to put is the variable which is going to contain the username. And if I don't put a space in this first box myself, then there won't be a space between the comma and the username. So you have to keep that in mind when you use the join command. So okay, so I go ahead and use the join command. I'm going to replace this with not just saying hello, but it's actually going to say hello to that use that entire username. I'm just going to stop the program. I don't want it running just yet. And I'm going to do something similar with the age. So instead of saying hello, I will say your age is. And again, I don't know if you can see it, but there's already a space on the end there. We need that space because we want this to look like a, a sentence and then we say your age, age is user age and we put that in there and now you can see it's going to do that joined sentence for both of these together and if I go ahead and run this now double click actually in order to run it I really should have added a when the flag is clicked because then I can click on the flag to start my program and it says what's your name Bob what's your age 15 and now it says hello Bob that's one part and the second part is your age is 15 now I can make this much more complicated if I wanted to I could do a longer join but you can see depending on which window we use for our scripts things can get pretty tight so if I go to this even smaller script window I'm just gonna finish up by showing you a really long join which would be I don't actually recommend doing it this way, but if you wanted to see, I want you to see that you can actually do all of these things together. And so we could, we could just take this join, which has hello username, and we could take this join, which has your age is, and we could just output those in one shot. Now this is not going to be ideal. Now I'm going to make this bigger again. You can see that makes it tough. If it's any reasonable size, I lose stuff. So I run that and I say Bob and I say 15 but now I've lost some punctuation maybe you didn't see that I'm gonna make that a little bit uh, make that last a little bit longer so maybe make that five seconds make that bigger again and run it what's your name Bob and 15 and now you can see I'm, I don't have a period on the end of Bob and if I'm going to start including punctuation like periods I really should put that on the end of both. You know what, for this message at the end, maybe I don't want to say it for five seconds. Maybe that's a good place for us to just, just to leave it up. So I'm going to bring back in the say command and then put my join in there. But that still doesn't solve my problem. What about the punctuation? 
And so you, what you end up doing, and this is where Scratch, although it's a really good program and is a good way to learn programming, it does have its limitations. Because what do we want? Well, what should it say? It should say, hello, Bob, but then there should be a period on the end. So the way we do that is we have to do, for that sentence, we have to do two joins, hello, and then whatever the name is, and then this last box, I'm going to put a period. But I'm also, let's see, actually, no, that's fine. And then I'm going to create my second sentence, which has, uh, I've got a join and another join. Now for this one, we want it to say, your age is, and we also want a period on the end of that one. And we're not quite there, because again, things get more complicated. At the end of this first sentence, we just have a period, which means at the beginning of this next sentence, we probably want to have a space. So I have to put that in manually. And now I have to take both of these things and I have to do yet another join, bring them all together. There's the first half. Here is the second half. I've created this really long construct and it's very awkward looking. And then that's what I have to say at the end. And so this is where we're going to finish it off. I'll run this. Hopefully it's going to work correctly. And I end up with this big long sentence. And yeah, I guess that's nice, but look how awkward it is in the actual program. So use that join command sparingly. Try to only put together one or two of them at a time and then break up your dialogue into multiple dialog boxes. Okay, so we've talked about user input, we've talked about variables, we've talked about user output, and a way to make our output a little bit more meaningful. And I've also warned you about some of the pitfalls of trying to make too elaborate or too long a sentence using Scratch. There are other tutorials out there where I do talk about variables in more depth. You might want to take a look at those if you want to explore that topic a little bit more.